Hey guys, welcome to the channel and what we are going to talk about today are five settings that you should change when you buy a brand new TV. Now these settings are going to help you optimize your viewing experience and I'm going to tell you things like change the picture settings from standard to cinema when you're watching movies. Those are fairly basic and I think those settings are some things that you guys uh, can figure out especially if you're someone that has been watching TV for a while but here are some settings which I'm sure there's at least one out here that you did not know about which you should change and that will drastically improve your content consumption experience. Now, a couple of caveats out of the way. What we are going to be talking about today are basically two operating systems. One is LG's WebOS. I have access to the B9. So if you have, let's say, a C9 or a B9 or even a C8 or a B8 or a C10 or a B10 or even the G series of any of these model numbers, basically the 8, 9 and 10 series of OLEDs from LG, these settings should work for, for you. I also have access to the LG G2, which means that if you have a C1 or a G1 or a C2 or a G2 or even to some extent the C3 and the G3, these settings should work for you because the older web OS which just had the card layout at the bottom is the one we're going to consider as well as the new one which has the full screen dashboard and it doesn't have the pink color pointer, it has the slightly more mature uh, black and white pointer uh, to give you guys a difference. Of course, uh, for those of you that know the terminologies, we're going to be looking at webOS 6 and newer and also webOS uh, that was before version um, 6. So that's some clarity for you. I'm going to put the timestamps uh, in the uh, navigation bar on YouTube as well for you guys to have a much more better experience. Now, while I don't have access to a Sony TV, I am going to tell you which uh, settings you need to change on a Sony TV or rather a Google or an Android TV. Of course, maybe something is a little here or there based on the Android TV version you have. Sorry, I don't have access to an Android TV right now, but I'm going to talk about uh, the steps. So that was the disclaimer. Now, before we go into the settings, we're just going, if you want to just know which settings to change and how to, you can look at the timestamps and do that. What I'm going to talk about now is why you should change these settings. And I'm going to go over all five of them together one at a time. So why you should switch off energy savings on your TV. Now, yes, of course, energy consumption is high, especially if you have a high end TV. But if you switch on energy savings, some of the TVs give you the option of low, medium, high energy savings. And that actually controls how bright your TV can get. So even if you keep peak brightness at high, but the energy saving as on or maximum, your TV isn't going to hit the peak brightness. And when you're watching something in HDR or even SDR, as a matter of fact, especially on an OLED TV, everything is going to look really dim unless you're in a very, very dark room. So if you have some bias light, everything is going to look dim. And while changing these settings, I'm going to show you how that works. So energy savings, you can put it off. And 99% of the time, the energy consumption that you're going to do is fairly marginal, especially when you compare it to the difference in the experience that you're going to get. So I suggest you should switch off. Don't put it on minimum or low or high or anything like that. Just switch off energy savings. That's in my opinion. The second thing is to keep peak brightness high. Now, if you are using a budget TV, this may not have a great impact, but if you're in the mid range to a slightly higher end TV and you switch the peak brightness to high, you are going to get a fantastic experience in HDR, especially when you're consuming content where you have bright highlights and darkness in the same scene, like a shooting star or a bright moon in a pitch dark night. You know, there are a lot of situations where the impactful HDR content, I'm not talking about the Game of Thrones stuff where everything in House of Dragons in that one episode was really dark yes that has something to do with the lower end of the brightness spectrum but I'm talking about when there's absolutely bright stuff happening on screen and you really need to have that impact so keep peak brightness at high of course if you're going to consume content in a pitch dark room then I would suggest you can put it on medium or low based on the comfort for your eye but high is where I leave it on my TVs Next one is enabling HDMI 2.1 features or ultra deep color as it's known on LG TVs. Now, uh, on Sony TVs, you will of course have different functions or on Android TVs, like on a lot of Xiaomi, Redmi, Realme TVs, you're gonna have it labeled as HDMI 2.1, but some brands like LG prefer to call it HDMI ultra deep color. And you should switch this on if you want to take advantage of HDMI 2.1 features. Now, some of the newer LG and Sony TVs give you the ability to switch this on automatically. But if you have a slightly older TV, then you can go to these settings. And remember, if you have a PS5 or an Xbox Series X, you do get those check marks on whether the TV supports HDMI 2.1 features like 4K at 120 hertz, etc. And if these check marks are not there on your console, then you may want to check these settings, especially if your TV claims to be capable of these. One tidbit 
bit is that a lot of TVs give you limited HDMI 2.1 ports. Sony, for example, it's HDMI 3 and 4. On the LG B9 series also, I'm sorry, uh, on the B1 onwards, you also get only two HDMI 2.1 ports, but the uh, C and the G series on uh, LG's OLEDs gives you all four HDMI 2.1 ports. So these are some things to keep in mind. Now, the next one, of course, is going to be switch off motion flow. This can be called true motion. This can be called ultra smoothing. This can be called motion flow. It can be called a lot of things, but essentially it makes content look way smoother than it should. And I highly recommend switching it off because I find it really jarring even when watching sports content. So I think you should keep all forms of true motion clarity off, all forms of smoothening off just so that you can watch content or play games in the way that it was intended to by the creator. Last but not the least is very simple game mode. In some uh, televisions, you simply go into the picture settings and switch on game mode and game mode is active. In other TVs, you may need to go a little deeper to get into the detailed gaming functions. And we are going to talk about those settings as well when I elaborate. So here, and of course, the reason you're going to do this is to reduce input lag, ensure any form of artificial crushing of black levels uh, is also taken care of. And basically, your TV is being told, hey, this is an, uh, you know gaming console and just show me the output as it is without any uh, of the artificial picture enhancing settings that are there on TVs, which help when you're watching regular content. But when it's gaming, you need it to be at source, especially if you want lower input lag. So without further ado, if you've been watching this, thank you so much. Let's get started with the settings and how to change them. Now, just in the interest of conversation, I'm going to call it LG's WebOS Old, LG WebOS New and I'm also going to call it Sony or Android TVs for you guys uh, to be able to hear. So let's get started with LG's older UI settings first. Now this is for energy savings mode. All you need to do is go into all the settings, go into picture, go into energy savings and switch it off. And as you can see, I'm probably switching it on and off out here to show you how it looks like when it is on and when it is off and the difference is night and day. So I would highly recommend you keep this uh, setting as off. Now for the newer version of WebOS, you actually need to go into general, OLED care, device self care, energy saving, and then you just put energy savings off out there. Again, it is gonna have a great impact on how you perceive the content on your TV. Now, uh, since we don't have access to an Android TV, I got this information of Sony's website, which has Google and Android TVs, and I'm sure it's applicable for other Google and Android TVs as well, but on a Sony TV, you go into the settings, select system, power and energy, energy savings, power savings, and then you can just put it off. There is a low and high option as well on some Sony TVs, but I would recommend you put it off. Now moving over to peak brightness for the LG TV with the old UI, you can use uh, go into uh, settings, picture mode settings, expert controls, and here you have peak brightness, and I would recommend you keep it on high. For the new WebOS, you can go into picture, advanced settings, brightness, peak brightness, and again, you can switch it to high out here. You have a bunch of options to choose from. Now, again, there are various different ways you can do this on a Sony or an Android TV, but roundabout, there are display and sound settings where you'll have picture, you'll have the ambient light sensor that you can put off, or you will have the light and color sensor that you should put off. And you can also have the brightness with peak luminance to put it uh, high or low. This is where it is with Sony. You can probably, uh, you know, tinker around with the picture settings to find that. I, again, didn't have access to an Android TV to show you guys this. Again, enabling uh, ultra deep color, which is HDMI 2.1 on the old LG UI, you need to go into picture, additional settings, HDMI ultra deep color, and then toggle that on. On the new LG TVs, the minute you connect your gaming console, it is going to recognize it and switch on HDMI Ultra Deep Color. But if it doesn't, you can go into Settings, Picture, Advanced Settings, Brightness, Video Range, and I would recommend you leave it on Auto rather than Limited or Full because Auto will just automatically detect what your console or external device is capable of and use that. So that's a good thing with the newer uh, LG UIs. For Sony TVs and Android TVs, this could get a little complicated, but as Sony's website puts it, you can go into uh, settings, watching TV, external inputs, HDMI signal format, here HDMI 3 and 4 are the ones which have HDMI 2.1 capabilities, and you can switch it to enhanced HDMI 2.1, 
which is the enhanced format is what it will be called uh, for you know 4K at 120 hertz with a gaming console there's a separate option for Dolby Vision I don't recommend going into that especially if you're using a gaming console if you're using something like an Apple TV to get great Dolby Vision then you can choose that because the new Apple TV boxes are HDMI 2.1 capable but if you're using a gaming console I would suggest keeping it on the enhanced format I have done this when I used to review uh, Sony TVs and I thought that performance especially with a gaming console was absolutely fantastic now to switch motion flow or motion smoothing on and off on the old LG UI you can go into all settings picture mode settings picture options motion I care and switch it off and it's gonna just keep everything just switch off all the ultra smoothing on the new LG UI you can go into picture advanced settings clarity true motion switch it off you're good to go on a Sony TV or on some other Android TVs you can go into display and sound picture advanced settings motion motion flow as it's called and switch it off and trust me you're gonna have a world of a different experience yes if you like motion flow you can keep it on but I would recommend give it a couple of days and uh, switch it off and give it a go you are gonna have a much better viewing experience last but not least for gamers again like I said there are two options you can go into the picture settings and switch on game mode or the other one I'm just gonna elaborate those three as well for these operating systems for the old LG UI you can go into settings picture additional settings instant game response and toggle this on now in some TVs this may be toggled on automatically when you connect a gaming console but it's okay for you to follow these steps and go and check it especially if you have the older uh, LG UI but for the new UI I know that it's automatically detected however once you've put your picture mode as gaming you can go into all settings uh, general game optimizer and uh, switch this on and you get this really cool UI on the new LG TVs that can give you the variable refresh rate information you can control the genre that you're playing you can control the black levels it gives you a lot of settings and I'm going to talk about them when I do a detailed long-term review of my LG uh, G2 if you have any questions for that TV you can let me know in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them in case of a Sony TV or another Android TV you can actually or a Google TV you can go into display and sound picture picture mode and just switch on the game mode and that should enable your uh, you know low input lag as well so there you have it guys those were five settings which I think are semi pro level which you should consider changing if you want to enhance your TV viewing experience if you want more tips like this about consuming great content on your TV you can let me know in the comment section below and I will do my best to try and show you those settings um, you know the standard stuff is stuff you should keep doing switch to cinema or movie when you're watching a movie you can use standard if you're watching uh, regular TV shows vivid also works great in some cases especially if you have a budget TV that can't display HDR content great sometimes vivid mode helps with that even though it kind of makes the colors a little oversaturated but that's a compromise especially on budget TVs and of course in sound mode I would suggest that if you have a AI sound as an option you can always use that else just leave it on standard movie or music preset based on what your ears enjoy listening to so there you have it guys thank you so much for watching this video we will catch you in another one it's goodbye for now but don't forget to subscribe to the channel hit the like button if you like this video and of course help spread the word goodbye